All right, guys, time to start chapter nine. And chapter nine is about performing inference in first order logic. We talked about inference in propositional logic back in chapter seven. And chapter eight, we got an introduction to first order logic. So chapter nine is about talking about inference in first order logic and deep digs into a little bit deeper into the concepts of forward chaining and backwards chaining. You know, those types of inferences and also you know, you're going to start seeing a little bit of um, a little bit of prologue examples here towards the end so let's get started these are the sections that we're going to cover in chapter nine uh, we're going to in this video we're going to go through 9.1 propositional versus first order logic and then 9.2 is unification and lifting and yeah, these are terms that you'll see you know if you're going through the different prologue tutorials you're going to see a lot of this language popping up again and again and again and again. Uh, then 9.3 is about forward chaining, 9.4 is about backward chaining, and, uh, and then, then we'll have the summary at the end. We'll skip over 9.5. All right, so propositional versus first order reference, section 9.1. All right, so here's the idea. What we wanna do with our first order logic is we wanna use inference rules that can allow us to get rid of the quantifiers from the different sentences in our logic. So we want to be able to replace sentences that have the universal quantifier or the existential quantifier. We want to, we want to get those out. We want to replace those with non-quantified sentences, right? So we'll look at some rules that we can use to do that. And by applying those rules to sentences in a knowledge base, you can convert that knowledge base. So that it's using propositional logic, right? Instead of the first order logic. And so what that allows you to do is to reuse propositional inference. So what we wanna do is convert our first order logic to propositional logic. So that way we can perform propositional inference, which we already talked about how to do in chapter seven. And so if we want to do inference in, in, in first order logic, first convert your knowledge base from first order to propositional, and then just using the propositional inference algorithms that we've already studied. It really boils down to that. All right, so let's take a look at some of these rules. So if you were to assume that the knowledge base contains this sentence, right, that is universally quantified for all X, if X is a king and X is greedy, that implies that X is evil. So this is another way of saying that all greedy kings are evil. So that allows us to infer any of these where, you know, we have these terms, John and Richard and, you know, a function father, John. So you can say, you can infer that John is evil. If John is both a king and greedy, you can infer that Richard is evil. If you have Richard being both a king and greedy and you can infer that the father of John is evil if the father of John is both a king and greedy and so on. And so the first inference rule that we can have to eliminate the universal quantification to get rid of this for all X. If we get rid of that for all X, then we can move from first order logic to propositional logic. And again, that'll allow us to use propositional inference algorithms to infer things. So how, how do we do that? So what you do is, is you use this universal instantiation rule, the UI rule, and that allows us to infer any, right? Any type of a sentence. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we'll substitute, we'll replace the variable with a ground term. Okay, now remember what a ground term, what is that? What is that? What's the definition for that? It's a term without variables. So what we want to do is, is we want to replace the X with a ground term, right? So here's how you can formally write it out, right? It's a substitution function. You know, you can, you know, this thing right here is basically just saying, look, you can go ahead and substitute some ground term theta in some sentence alpha. Right, so the uh, symbols here, the for all v um, alpha 
over substitute of v forward slash g comma alpha. This is just saying, yeah, okay, all right, here's a rule. Here's, here's, the, here's the universal instantiation rule. This is just saying for any variable v that is part of sentence alpha, you can substitute a ground term for v. Right? That's, that's what that's saying. So, for example, for the previous sentences, right, we were able to replace or use John to replace X. We were able to use Richard to replace X. We were able to use Father John to replace X. And this is what this syntax means. This is just saying, look, we're substituting X. We're, we're, we're going to go ahead and use John to substitute for X. We're going to go ahead and use Richard to substitute for X and so on. So remember what the X was, you know, for all X, king of X, greedy X, evil you know, implies evil X, right? So this is just saying, hey, you, you can make new sentences where you're just doing all of these substitutions, right? So once you've done that, you've made new sentences with those substitutions, you no longer have to have this universally quantified um, rule anymore, okay? All right, so let's go on. So the existential instantiation rule, this is a little bit different. What this is saying is that the variable is gonna be replaced by one new constant symbol, right? A new constant symbol that is found nowhere else in your knowledge base. So here's you know, how we can write that out. This is just saying, you know, there exists some variable V in sentence alpha. Go ahead and substitute that variable just once, we can only do it once with the existential instantiation rule with some constant K, right? Within that sentence, that's all it's saying. So example, if you've got a sentence, there exists some X such that crown of X and on head X to John, you, you, we can replace that. We can eliminate that existential quantifier. This is just saying that there is a crown that is on John's head, right? Well, we can infer if we replace X with some constant symbol, call it C sub one, right? We can replace it because you know there is just one. So we can eliminate the variable by just making up a constant symbol. I mean, it could be anything, but we can call it C sub one or we could call it doggy doo doo, it doesn't matter, okay? It just allows us to eliminate this variable X and therefore be able to get rid of the existential quantifier. You just have to make sure that your new constant it's nowhere else in the knowledge base, right? So we're just saying by doing that, there's some object satisfying the condition and whatever that object is, we're gonna call it C sub one for right now. Now, the universal instantiation rule, okay, that can be applied over and over and over again because we can infer any sentence and tamed by substituting ground term for the variable. So I already kind of alluded to this a second ago, but, you know, UI can be applied over and over again. EI is just applied the once, okay? But UI can be applied over and over again. So let's give another example here with the existential quantifier, right? So if you say, you know, that there's something out there that's going to kill some victim, right? You're saying there exists some X where that X is going to kill some victim. Well, once we figure that out, right, and once we decide that we're going to replace that X with some constant, then we don't need the existential quantifier anymore. So, for example, you know, maybe I say instead of X, we'll say murderer. And so there exists a murderer who's going to kill some victim. So I don't need this sentence anymore. I can replace it with this. That gets rid of the existential quantifier. Okay, so why does it matter? Okay, it matters because by using those rules, right, using those techniques of removing the existential and the universal quantifiers, you now have first order inference or trying to do inference in first order logic changed, right? You can reduce it to propositional inference. Okay, so we know how to do that. We know how to do inference from prop from, in propositional logic, so get rid of those quantifiers, and it's no longer first order logic. We now can apply stuff we already know, right? The the, the algorithms for propositional inference. All right, so 
with that universal inference, right? So with UI, we can get rid of that universally quantified sentence, as I've said already, by replacing a set of all that's possible. So let's give an example here, right? So you've got a knowledge base, okay, containing these sentences. You're saying, for all X, if X is a king and greedy, then it's evil, right? We know that we've got King John. We know that we've got John that's greedy. We know that you know, Richard is the brother of John, fine. So what we can do is we can apply UI to that first sentence using all the possible ground terms. So replace X with John, replace X with Richard. So what does that get us, right? Instead of having the universally quantified sentence, we can remove that from our knowledge base. Now we can replace it with King John and greedy John implies evil John, King Richard and greedy Richard implies evil Richard, right? Now those are the only sentences that are possible because we only have Richard and John. And so these are the possible ground terms that we can have. So there's no need to have this universally quantified sentence anymore. We can replace it. And by doing that, we've moved a step closer to having our knowledge base in the form of propositional logic and not first order logic. All right? So what does that mean? Now, any of those propositional logic algorithms from chapter seven can be uh, used with our knowledge base. So we can generalize this process and that's what section 9.5 covers. But what this allows for is for us to have a complete process of inference. And there is, or this, 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 this um, process is known as propositionalization. Okay, the process of transforming a knowledge base <clears throat> from first order logic into propositional logic. Okay, and so by having a complete process of inference, right, that, that, that can be done, this means that any entailed sentence can be proved from our knowledge base at this point. Okay. So that's basically all it's about with section 9.1. We just want to say, look, we got a knowledge base. It's, it's, it's made up of first order logic, right? And we need to be able to do inference. Well, if we want to be able to do inference, we want to be able to reuse those algorithms for propositional logic that we saw in chapter seven. So we'll go through this process of proposition of propositionalization. <laughs> Okay, and um, that will make our knowledge base be comprised of first order logic, and then we can go through and um, use those first order logic algorithms to do inference. Now, you know, you might just need to, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep the knowledge base in, you know, propositional form forever. You might just have to temporarily convert the knowledge base to propositional forms, so that way you can do the um, inference, wherever inference you need to perform for your agent, um, and use you know the inference algorithms on that temporary knowledge base, leaving your original first order knowledge base intact. Fine, you know it just depends on on what you need to do and what you're trying to do and what the performance implications are and, and all that kind of stuff. But again, big idea: get rid of the quantifiers, the existential quantifiers, the universal quantifiers. You know, by doing existential instantiation, right, which can only be applied once, and by using universal instantiation, which can be applied as many times as you need to to come up with a set of sentences rather than just one sentence, um, as in the uh, EI process, right, as with existential instantiation. Okay, so that's everything for section 9.1. I'll see you next time for section 9.2.